Man, this has been a fast-moving week. I mean, don't look now, but the weekend is here. And what a weekend it is going to be. I suddenly broke into a Vin Scully yes, voice. Yes, you did. The Marvelous. And when you talk about three guys before the game, well, you got to talk about Hoppy Kerchival. <laughs> Not only a distinguished newsman, a sport man, but now he is a beer man. <laughs> this is Three Guys Before the Game, the 431st episode. The title is Kansas and Kerchival Preview. You know, I was trying to do sober January. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get till Friday. <laughs> You last like slightly longer than I did with chocolate. <laughs> we all have our so we, we all have our demons. We now are just hours away from our three guys before the game first ever public live event. It's the debut of the Hoppy Kirchival beer. Hoppy is currently holding the growler that will be presented to the folks that are in attendance at our event at the Apothecary Ale House. The beer from Chestnut Brew Works, a custom beer. People have asked me in the last couple of days, have you tasted it? Have you tasted it? I have not, and I won't. I'm going to wait. Hoppy hasn't even tasted it. No. Named after him, it, he hasn't even tasted it. He has not tasted it. No. What's Santa he, Claus did, we know that. Well, yeah, Sam, we saw Santa there, so he's, he's totally ready to go. More on that coming up in just a little bit. Three Guys Before the Game is brought to you by the Burdette Camping Center, the only warranty forever. RV dealer in all of West Virginia. Visit them at BurdetteCamping.com. Not sure if some of the people in attendance at our Kirchival event will drive in R RV in, right? It's a possibility they I could would come think in, many in, a, of them will. in a Burdette yeah. camper, make it a whole tailgate situation, do the hoppy thing Friday, and then the Kansas basketball game. Three guys also brought to us by Comax Business Systems. They're your full service Konica Minolta dealer. Go to Comax Business Systems at Comax. WV.com. And by GoMart. If you aren't a GoMart Rewards card member, you need to sign up today. You can save on your gas, favorite snacks. Just go to the website GoMart.com for more details. Go for good times. Go for GoMart. I think almost all of the people that are driving in for the event will fill their tanks with GoMart gas before they get here. I'm sure. Unconfirmed, yep. but very high yeah, probability sure. of that. Get a slim gym, too. Yeah. Oh, that's a whole nother, Flat whole whole nother Flat story. Slim, yeah. All right, so we're going to jump in here. We've got West Virginia and the Kansas Jayhawks. It's the first of a two-game homestand for WVU. Kansas Saturday, next Wednesday, the Baylor Bears will come to town. It is opportunity for West Virginia to even up its league slate at 2-2. Two and two. You're at home. These are the games you just have to find a way to win. And uh, last night, you had two road teams win in the conference. The Iowa Staters won at Oklahoma. What a game that was. That was weird. It was weird. Yeah. Iowa State storms out. Big lead. Oklahoma comes on a 20 to nothing run. You don't see those often. Uh, 20 to nothing. The Cyclones went nine plus minutes without scoring. That's a heck of a drought. That's, yeah, that's it. And one on the road. Hello. And then TCU came back from 17 down at Baylor. That was a big that was a big boy basketball game. That was fun final possessions in that game. TCU stumbled out of the gate this year which surprised a lot of people that non-conference and kind of went, "Oh, well maybe the maybe the hype is unwarranted." The hype I think is warranted. They are very good. You talk about fast, you talk about a team that pushes it. Mike Miles, really impressive for TCU. Do you remember before the season started when we were doing how many players were lost and how much percent of their offense mm -hmm. didn't return for each school in the league? Those guys were like 3%. Yeah, they, almost the, everybody's back and a Big 12 preseason player of the year. That helps a little bit too. My, my, I mean, Miles is really good. When you're torching Baylor like that, you're, you're the deal. Yeah. He did whatever he wanted. I watched the end of that Iowa State-Oklahoma game, and it was anybody's game. And then Iowa State, I think they were down at that point near the end. And then uh, Caleb Grill nails a three. You can three. shoot it a little bit. Top of the key. Yeah. Nails a three, ends up with 20. 
Yeah, he can shoot it a little bit. Yeah. It's going to be tough. There's nothing that's happened so far in the league that we didn't think was going to happen in the sense that we what did we what have we been harping on? These games are going to be great. Like all these games are going to be great games and it's like so far almost a week in like they are. They're just like Slugfest. The surprise to me has been the road wins. You just mentioned the two last night. Didn't Kansas State was that Texas game on the road? Was, yeah, yeah, that was Texas. on the road too. So that's three massive and wins. Kansas this week. at Texas Tech. I know. So that's three this week. Two last night, then the K State one. Four. Oh, Kansas at Texas. Yes. Yeah, yeah, four. Yeah, that's been the surprise. Yeah, but that shows the balance in this league. Yeah, I mean Oklahoma's Oklahoma's what they're zero and two, and they're they're not bad. No. <laughs> they're 0 2 they're they're 0 2 in the league. So we'll see what happens. So that makes this game coming up here super de duper important. West Virginia has played Kansas in Morgantown ten times. And West Virginia has won six. They're six and four. Yeah, but they've lost the last three. Yeah, I'm well aware. They've Means also, they're due. They've also lost they're eight. Due. They've also lost eight of the last nine. Have they? Yeah. Do. Yeah, they have. Eight of the last nine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's off. It's either eight or nine or seven of the last eight, but I'm also positive it's eight. I looked it up. Yeah, I'll look. Not it up good. For you. I looked up for it. Well, here's the the reality of it is West Virginia's six and four on their home floor. Very few teams in the conference have a winning percentage against Kansas on their own home floor. Forget about Allen Fieldhouse. I'm saying I mean, that's real. I mean, on their own home floor, it's hard to beat these cats. It really, truly is hard to beat them. I was telling Brad some other numbers. All 24 meetings between the two schools, and Saturday will be 25, Kansas has been nationally ranked. And only five times they haven't been in the top 10. Well, well. West Virginia has been ranked 14 of the 24 games. Last year, they pistol whipped West Virginia. Three times. Average, I mean, all three times they pistol whipped them. Yeah. Average margin of victory by Kansas last year? Probably 15 or 20. 21. But they did win the world champ, the world's championship. They won the world's championship. They won the world year. championship in West Virginia with the forgettable season. So, you yeah, I think I that margin of victory tightens this year. You would hope. I understand. Hoppy, did you do any research on? Uh... Well, I did enough to be dangerous. Oh, go and ahead. Let's start with uh, something I discovered last night, and you probably, you guys, uh, get ready because you probably didn't know this. <laughs> Have you ever heard of this thing called Google? <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Probably didn't know this. Kansas has guys. Mm. <laughs> they got a couple guys. A few players. <laughs> yeah. uh, Jalen Wilson is back. Jalen Wilson averaged 16 points against West Virginia in those three wins last year. He's leading the Big 12 in scoring with 21 points, eight rebounds a game. Brad, 6'8", 225. Is he a problem? He's good. Yeah. Freshman Grady Dick from Wichita. Freshman. Can shoot it. Can shoot it. His three-point shooting percentage is the same as his two-point shooting percentage. Saw that. Saw that. 47%. And he does, you know what he does, Brad? He does a step back. He'll do that, too. He'll step back on you. He's got size, too. 6'8". He's a problem. Dewan Harris, who's coming off a career-high 18 against Texas Tech. Tough win on the road at Texas Tech. And 5 of 5 from 3 in that game. Exactly. Was DeJuan Harris. He's the straw that stirs their Jayhawk drink. K.J. Adams. Strong, tough. Leads the Big 12 in field goal percentage. 68%. Because most of the time when he, he shoots, so. he sticks his head inside the rim. <laughs> the end of that Texas Tech game the other night. He, oh, boy. So, they have two, so, according to ESPN's 2023 draft projection, they have two guys in the top, top 40. Wilson and Dick? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So start there. They have guys. I know you didn't know that, so I'm breaking some news to you. Might as well. Brad, you can take it from there. So well, they, they, I mean, they, they are well what they are, are right? I mean, well it's done. not like they've come in here and we've said, well, you know what? They don't have really. They don't have guys this year. They don't have guys. So they're doing what they do, right? They have players. I think one of the things that continues to impress me about them when you watch them play, they make you defend the whole floor. You know, you have to defend transition against them. They continually put pressure on you going to the basket. They space when their guys cut. They're not cutting just because the offensive diagram on the whiteboard tells you to cut around the screen and kind of loop around. They cut to an open spot. They can find them. You've got to defend everything with them. If you go through the numbers, the numbers are pretty similar here. I mean, this on paper should be a really good game. You start to look at offense and defensive efficiencies. 
both these teams are very good. Here's some areas to keep an eye on. Go ahead. Were you thirsty? You're going into your coffee? Go, go ahead. Oh, he's got his thermos out. Go ahead. Why do you do? Why do you stop? And then the camera goes on you. I can just slide Because it here still quietly. just surprises me. We're doing a broadcast, and you just break out coffee in the middle of the broadcast. It's still surprise. Does it surprise you at yes, all or wait, no? Not anymore. It's just kind of funny. Like, he, he knows you're going to have a long riff here. <laughs> So he sees this as an opportunity. He's just pitched the ball to the outside, and he knows I'm going up the sideline right, exactly. here. Exactly. Yeah. I'm yes. go, or I'm dribbling out the shot clock here. I'm going to take the last shot. So he's just going to go ahead and have a coffee. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, you he's, guys, you guys always like give me crap. Like you, we're we're doing a broadcast. That's what we're doing. We're doing a broadcast. I'm not doing neurosurgery. <laughs> I can stop and talk and have a. You always say, Hoppy, pour your second. What well, you do that show in the morning. Pour your second cup of coffee. You use some line like that. Well, that's all I'm doing. This is actually my first. This is your 06? This, I mean, this is your 1106 I didn't, coffee? I didn't have my normal, regularly scheduled coffee today. I've done, I've done 10 years worth of shows with you. I've done games with you. I've done multiple podcasts with yeah. you. I've done national radio with you. Yeah. Never seen you break out coffee until like three weeks ago. I mean, you, you say no, that like it's something also, that you do regularly. This is a new development in your repertoire. Well, that's good. All right, this, but that's good coffee. But here's Tony. Tony, like, so Brad, what do you have? <laughs> and I, I'm surprised you haven't attacked as much as he calls your. Emmy award-winning program, a coffee clatch. He's turned this into a coffee clatch. This is a beer show. This is actually this is a, beer a coffee show. clatch. No, 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 no. Hey, listen, we're not roasting coffee, Brad. We're we're making beer. Well, I, have a feel, a, I have a feeling man. coffee's coming next. Man. That might be the next beverage on the be. three guys. This menu. is a beer cast. Forget about a podcast. This is a hoppy All beer right. cast. Let's continue. All right, go ahead. Let's look at some areas here to pay attention to. Points off turnovers. Both teams very good in this area, so that's going to be a key. Kansas is in the 90th percentile nationally, West Virginia 89th. So both teams do well in getting points off turnovers. Here's the number that surprised me of all the numbers. Free throw attempt rate. Spent a lot of time on free throws this week in officials. West Virginia continues to be really dependent on this area, getting to the free throw line. In fact, they're in the 93rd percentile in free throw attempt rate. So they get to the line. You know who else does that every year? Kansas is really good at that. Why are you laughing? Because I just looked at how many free throws they've attempted and how many we've attempted. Okay, hold on. So Kansas, every year, one of the things I think that makes them so difficult to play against, and we talk about guarding the whole floor, they go to the rim as hard as any program in America. Absolutely. And it is a beast to defend Absolutely. because it's multiple guys. And they spread you, and they put it on the floor, and they put pressure on the rim, and you either foul them or they get layups on you. It's, it's a really difficult style to play against. Well, they're not, they're not doing that this year. They are in... The eighth percentile in free throw attempt rate. In their last five games, they're in the zero percentile. They're one of the lowest teams in the country in terms of free throw rate in the entire country, which is very on Kansas-like. Okay, go ahead. Give the raw data. Raw data. This is an amazing number. West Virginia so far this season has attempted, or I'm sorry, you know, Kansas. Kansas has attempted 207 foul shots. They've attempted 207 foul shots. The world champion Mountaineers have attempted 327. 120 more mm -hmm. shots through 14 games means West Virginia is taking about eight more free throw attempts per game than Kansas. Now stop right there, folks. <laughs> Let's hold the phone. I know that everyone's perception is that Kansas gets all the calls. That's just not a West Virginia thing. That's across the league. That's across anyone that plays Kansas on a regular basis. But the data says that at least as of going into Saturday, that West Virginia is getting 120 more free throw attempts so far this season. That is a significant number. Watch it tomorrow. Watch it tomorrow. West Virginia's got to continue to do what it does and get to the line. And then the next piece is – make free throws we know that's been a problem the last two weeks so get the right guys to the line get your shooters to the line tomorrow if those Saturday. two buckets what am i saying you keep it's saying it's tomorrow it's tomorrow. tomorrow's You're, friday tomorrow is kerchival day it's hey by right the way day. Saturday. I, right just, saturday i just thought of something what all this big political stuff you got going on there you're gonna go down to the capitol here in a uh -huh. week or so and like that why wouldn't the state like proclaim tomorrow don't they always do those proclamations like 
why wouldn't tomorrow be Kurt Javel Day in the state of West Virginia? Probably you're, should have You're been. an honored, distinguished West Virginia. You're going to have a beer in your name released tomorrow. Why wouldn't there be some form of state proclamation hailing you? It's a tourism thing. You're an ambassador. You have your own product. You're trying to help the economy. You're helping a local brewery. You're helping a local ale house. Why wouldn't they do that? Well, I think actually, I think it was suggested and, and debated. You see what's happening in the U.S. House? Kind of like that. <laughs> There's not, there's <laughs> they, not couldn't come to a, they couldn't come to a consensus. There's not universal agreement on, on the uh, actual contribution by Kirchhoff, by Kirchhoff Ale. But, you know, the, back to your foul shots, I mean, that, that's an amazing stat, and that certainly can help you Saturday. And maybe, maybe, because you're home and you have a big crowd, maybe you could go to a whistle, go a whistle there. Yes? You hope to. Don't you get it? You hope to. So if those two things what, stay Tony, consistent. Why are you smiling? Get a whistle? I know, I know the names. I know the names who are going to be here. I'll say this. If it holds true, there will be a lot of foul shots. There will be a lot of foul shots. That's what I'll say. West Virginia should get the bulk of them. Okay, fine. But If they don't, that's going to be a problem. Based upon the personnel who will be in attendance wearing striped shirts, there will be – there's definitely one cat that will – he'll have to change his whistle at halftime like a pit stop. He'll have to go get <laughs> another one. But that's something to watch. Last five sure. games, they're in the zero percentile. They're barely why registering. Is, okay, why is that? Because they're taking outside shots. Yeah, because they're not. They're, they're not, not going to the. They're not going to. The, they're not putting pressure on the rim like they. Which have is in the something past. Dewan Harris can do well. Yeah. Well, watch. They'll do it tomorrow. But they have maybe because of personnel. And they have guys that can make outside shots. Well, they do. They do. I mean, you talked about that. Uh, uh, Harris made five threes. Harris, Dick, Wilson, all of them can shoot from the outside. So watch that. Free throws. Who's getting them? And does West Virginia have a big advantage? Because, again, when you're looking for ways to beat really good teams, you need things. You need to find advantages. There aren't a ton of them. That is one. West Virginia getting to the line, get some free points, and you're at home. I was reading about the Texas Tech game, and one of the stories said, and I don't know, I think they shot like 21 three-pointers maybe, 23 pointers, that many of them were uncontested. So, I guess Texas Tech should be pretty good defensively, I guess. But, I mean, they – they had, they had open threes. This is a good team. They'll pass the ball. They did, you the just ball say, did you just bring up uncontested shots? Yes. Oh, here we go. you have a stat? Oh, I do. <laughs> How about that? How's this work out? How Didn't even that? plan that. No need to guess. We'll just go right to the numbers. West Virginia only gets... I'm bringing this back from last year, if you remember. You guys liked this stat when we'd go to this. Is this Havoc, right? Nope. That's football. <laughs> West Virginia only gets an unguarded catch and shoot 37% of the time. That's dead last in the Big 12. That's a heck of a stat. Tells you a lot. I'll give you a comparison so you just don't have a number floating out there, but it's 10th in the league, so that tells you something. The... Most unguarded catch and shoots in the league on a percentage Kansas. basis. No. Texas, 59% of their shots. Dang. On catch and shoots. That's a specific right, explain. time. Why is that? Pass ball, ball movement? They pass Passing. the ball well. That speaks to West Virginia's issue. They don't pass the ball well. Therefore, they don't get open looks. Shots. That's a good, that's an okay. impressive stat. That's a great stat. So watch that it tomorrow. Is. Two things, two other things I think you need to watch. It's Saturday, by the way. Jeez, did I do it again? About five times. <laughs> that just, means now Kurt Javale today. Now I'm just going to keep doing it. <laughs> hey, now just go this way. Pretend the game's already been played. <laughs> Say last night. In the game yesterday. <laughs> Transition is going to be important. They always are. They get up and down the yes, floor. they always do. Second in the Big 12 in points per possession in transition. Second in the Big 12 in percentage of possessions that you score in transition, but only sixth in terms of frequency, which was a little lower than normal. So they're doing a couple things differently this year. Not not quite as much time in transition, but very good at it. Oh, wait, sorry, I messed that up. Let me ask you this. I messed that up. What do you mean? Start, start over, over then. Start really? over. That was actually West Virginia. That was actually West Virginia in transition. That's one of those Second areas. Second best in the league. Yeah, keep keep saying, have said now for a couple of years, I think West Virginia needs to get up and down a little more. Now, what would Hugs tell you about that? If you go faster, there's more of a chance of what? Turnovers. More turnovers. So guys that can't handle the ball, they go faster, they're going to turn it over. But I think this team is ready to kind of let it out a little bit. So that was West Virginia's line that I was reading there. Second in the Big 12 in points 
per possession, second in the Big 12 in the percentage of times that when you're in transition, you end up scoring in some form, but only sixth in terms of frequency. They don't do it enough. Don't do it enough. Do it more. Get up and down. West Virginia has three players in the top 20 points per possession in the Big 12 in transition. Who are they? Emmett? You could guess. Emmett? Keedy? Oh, really? Stevenson? No. Tucson? You, your guy's filling the lanes. Who's filling it? Emmett Mitchell Wagee. Three of your top oh, 20 yeah, guys Mitchell in points of possession and transition. Your guys that get out and run because they're going to score, right? Okay. They're the finishers. So let's underscore that then. So the, the analytics, if you're looking at it, you'd say, okay, this is what you do well. You do better and more efficient when you go up and down fast. You've been good. You've been good. Mm-hmm. Keep doing that. Yeah. Right? Or do more of it. If you're, if you're second in points per possession means you're pretty efficient and it's working, but you're only sixth in frequency. Now, some of that the game dictates. You know, if teams are making shots on you, you're not going to get in transition right. enough, right? So it's not just straight raw numbers. You've got to see how the game plays out. Sometimes West Virginia can't get up and go because of the, the way the game is dictating. But when they get their opportunities, and I thought – uh, the the one that was glaring was Emmett the other night. He did it twice. Once once he finished, where he caught the ball in in space. There wasn't a lot of traffic. He was in the middle of the lane. He was he was damn near turning towards the other end of the floor as he caught it, and he was down in a flash. Just beat everybody to the basket. Went one on one and finished. Those type of things. Emmett Wagi and Mitchell running the lanes. You've got a little something there. Okay. Yeah. There's one. I'm going to go back to what I said the other night, too. Corners? Corner threes. Hop. You, Hop wasn't familiar with this one. You're not familiar with was, this? He doesn't, he doesn't listen to sports line. West Virginia shoots it from the corner threes. Okay? Mm-hmm. Self-explanatory. Yeah. You know yeah, what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah. Shooting at 47% clip. That's really good. Yeah, it From is. a corner three. 96 percentile good. Almost one of the best in the country from the corner three. But they only shoot it 7% of the time. 7% of their shots are corner threes. 27th percentile so they've got an area of the floor that they've been shooting it well and again this is a smaller sample size as we go but it's an area some guys have been making it from is that maybe find the corners and get it going right is that since they're not getting those shots is that a result of not being able to successfully penetrate and kick it out uh don't know that tony says yes well i I say it's it's the passing of the ball okay i mean is there a night and day difference between the way pro players pass the ball compared to college players? Oh. I mean, when a pro team passes the ball, it's magical. It truly is magical. You see the game the way the game's supposed to be played. And for the life of me, I still struggle all the time to figure out why college teams don't put more emphasis on that. I the reason why you're well, not – most of the time because the players aren't as good passers, first of all. Well. I mean, you think no, college no, players no, are good I don't passers dis- as pros? I mean, that's not debatable. No, I don't disagree with you, but, like, why don't we work on that? <laughs> why, don't we, why, don't we spend, why don't we spend time on that, become that team? You know, everyone always in October, you, you well know this. How many times? In football, this is all we hear before the season starts. Best off season we've ever had. Team chemistry is great. <laughs> that's every single year, right? You know what the one in basketball is? Making shots and making the extra pass. Right, you know what happens to the extra pass when the season goes away? Season starts, it evaporates, zip, it's gone. You know, I, I think in in the pros, the game moves, the, it moves much. The execution is much faster, and also if a guy is dribbling around, he's trying to, and many times is creating a shot, okay, or they're passing very rapidly. In college, sometimes guys are dribbling around. And you're thinking, what are you doing? You're they dribbling get, around. They th- in college, oftentimes they think they get paid by the dribble. Seriously, they just pound it, pound it, pound it, pound it. The game's made to pass. Let me, let me go after them. Let me go but back. You, but you, it's an yeah. obvious reason why. The percentage of guys that play college basketball that go pro is what? Yeah, less than 2%. Okay, so less than 2% of the players on the floor are elite in a, in a certain skill. So the majority of them aren't good passers. So therefore, team passing is going to be worse than what it is. There's a, there's a big – I'm of the opinion there's a lot of – passing that is innate within you it is that is what innate within you got to be a good passer you got to just naturally be a good passer remember when when west virginia was in the final four and played duke got beat remember 
I mean, Duke was would did that extra pass, right? I mean, they got open shots because they they made the extra pass or two. Yeah. I mean, they had better players. Too, so but it's I mean, also it, a point of emphasis. <laughs> it's also a point of emphasis. Do you do you recruit to it? Did John Beeline's teams pass the ball well? Yes. yes. Showcase. But it, it was the individual guy. Go yes. look at the guys that oh, yeah. you say yeah, were yeah. good passers. Yeah. You you gave up some athleticism at times in order to get a fundamentally sounder player. I mean, Pat Beeline was not incredibly athletic, but he could pivot tremendously and pass the ball. And had a what? High basketball IQ. High that basketball that's IQ. generally helps your passing ability. Sure. If you're a high basketball IQ guy. Get the young men to work on their pivot. Darius Nichols. He passed it well. What's he do for a living? He coaches the game. Mm-hmm. What Pat get into? He coaches, he coaches the game. Mm-hmm. Mike Gansey's up in Cleveland. He works for the basketball club there. Mm. Could he pass? Pretty good. Hey, um, JD could pass a lot. Joe Hairbear. High basketball IQ with him or not? He's pretty smart. Yeah, pretty smart guy. Back to the. Let me go back macro again and think what this game means because uh, the, the odds aren't out yet. But Kansas will be favored by what? Mm. Two, three. I was going to wonder. I'm on that. not sold on that. Oh, Excuse really? me. I'm not sold on that. What's Kenny Palm have? He, Ken Palm has Kansas winning by just one. So if you factor in a couple points for home court, which West Virginia always has one of his higher home court advantage, right. West Virginia might be a favorite in this. Ken Palm normally has West Virginia as one of the top ten crowds in the country as far as impacting games. But how so big Kansas is this? Kansas may not be favored here. How big is this early? How big is this early January game? If you win it. Massive. Massive. I mean, thinking Capital. about what's ahead. I mean, because then if you lose, then you have to get Baylor. You have to. I mean, talk about must. I mean, early season must win would be Baylor. You have to win. Correct. Otherwise, you got to get on a heater somewhere along the line and win six in a row, mm-hmm. which yes. would be hard in this league. Correct. By the way, side note, back to passing. I think this team has a pretty good basketball IQ. They move the ball well early. They've got some guys. Stevenson knows what he's doing. Emmett knows what he's doing. Mm-hmm. Trey Mitchell's a willing and able passer. Mm-hmm. Toussaint can pass. Kedrian Johnson. I mean, you've got some guys on this roster that can pass the ball. That extra pass for them should be coming. Okay, so watch the corner threes because West Virginia's got an opportunity, I think, to take more of them based on a shooting percentage to see if that can hold up as they take more attempts. They just don't take a ton right now. On the flip side, watch Kansas do it. They love the corner. They love them some corner. 93rd percentile in attempts from the corner three, Hoppy. They find the three, they identify the three, they get in the corners and are stationary. Just average at percentage, 36%, but they like to shoot it. All right, I think that's all I got. It's a pretty good rundown. The only, only thing you screwed up on when the game is. Other than that. Well, that'll be a fun one tomorrow. I can't wait to watch it. <laughs> Glad you're not the coach. See you young men tomorrow at 4 o'clock. <laughs> The uh, does that are those all? I know you have an extra secret access to something. Is that Ken Palm? Because I was, I was no, briefly that's not reached, Ken Palm. No. I've really I've really got three extra special databases now. I'm up to three. He worked the deal this year, Hoppy. Oh, you got something. He worked the deal at don't the. Don't say high, that's enough. That you don't need to say anything else. At the highest level. That's it. I've got access. I was. I thought I was. I thought I was really on it last night. I was on the Ken Palm site. I'm going to get some even deeper. Data. Oh, uh, yeah, you can, but uh, Cost I'd be more. a charge for that. Well, yeah. Three so guys be- have basic stats. Is all. <laughs> you don't have to have stat envy. We all have our role. That's my. That's what well, I like I wanna, to look I wanna, at. I want to hold my own. I mean, I don't want to. I gave you all I got. <laughs> Hoppy, you've produced a beer for us. Yeah. That's really, I mean, that's kind of like, that's your legacy. Well, I didn't do that either. It's just like a. <laughs> that's your, no, it's got your name, name on it. It's a legacy. I mean, it's just like from simple to complex statistics, from simple to complex issues, Comax Business Systems can take care of you, whatever you need, from the most basic elements of a business, from equipment, all the way to the most difficult things like IT management, managing your voice and managing your IT. That's Comax Business Systems. They are the premier company in the state of West Virginia handling such items. Why do we say such things? Because on 10 different occasions, they've been named an elite dealer by ENX Magazine. No other dealer in the state has ever received that award. You can reach out to Comax, Comax, 
Find out how they can manage your IT, manage your voice, and your phone services, and take the worry out of your mind so that you can just do your business. When it comes to your business network, they've got you. Visit them at comaxwv.com. Three Guys Before the Game is also brought to us by the only Warranty Forever RV dealer in all of West Virginia. It's Burdett Camping Center. Visit them at burdettcamping.com, burdettcamping.com. And don't think spring and summer are far away because they really aren't when you think about it. I mean, according to you, the days are now getting longer. They are. And I was thinking uh, overnight, we're 10 weeks away, really, from the end of basketball season. I mean, that's middle of March. By the time middle of March gets here, I mean, it's... Wasn't Sunday exactly 10 weeks till the brackets revealed? I think it was. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was. So this goes by super quick. Wow. I think this is the fastest moving part of the entire year. Well, it's, it's more like November and December, I think, kind of drag... In basketball, they play some, and they don't play league, and yeah. it's just like, ah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, now I you get into it, and there's games, like and the thing and starts churning. It starts rolling, yeah. yeah. So Especially you, when there's a game on Friday, like tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so if it, if it comes there's Friday to, games now. Or, they sneak in there on the Fridays. Comes time to service your <laughs> recreational vehicle or buy one, check out the selection, burdettcamping.com. Just tell them. Three guys before the game sent you. Burdett, two T's next to each other, burdettcamping.com. Maybe it's like baseball, playing Friday and again Saturday and Sunday, <laughs> two on Sunday. Well, the NBA is starting to do some of that, um, some of that deal where you play the same team twice in the same city. You I think that I mean? makes sense. It does make a lot it of sense. Cuts travel. Yeah, yeah, it cuts travel. It's pretty neat, actually. You know, COVID changed a lot of things, made people look at things differently, schedule wise. Right, we were scheduling games like when, in twenty minute increments. Like, can you be here at 7.30? Yeah. It's kind of like that old joke when Frank Layden uh, took over the Utah Jazz and they just moved from New Orleans. And <laughs> when we, we did the interview with him, he's one of the funniest guys. If you ever want to f- laugh, folks, go to YouTube, put Frank Layden on. He was the former coach, general manager, Utah Jazz. He said, so we get, you got that Northeast exit. So we get to Salt Lake. And he said, and so we're just trying to do anything to get interest for the team. Guy says, what time's a game start? I said to him, what time can you be here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Ready? You ready? Hit that bad boy music. Away we go. The number to uh, text us available to you at 304-404-4083, 304-404-4083. Despite the fact that uh, Brad continues to uh, struggle with what day uh, it is, tomorrow, we were, we're recording Thursday afternoon, tomorrow is Friday the 6th, and in all seriousness, we are very much looking forward to hosting uh, the 50 folks that will be joining us for the release of Hoppy Kerchevel. We will begin the day here in our studio. They're going to get their picture made here in the <laughs> studio with us. And then we're going to do a live podcast recording downstairs in the Hall of Fame room. And then we're going to go across the street because we have our own Al House, which is located handy. 25, 20 yards from our door, probably. And then we're going to have Bill from Chestnut Brew Works explain the process and what the flavors are in Hoppy's beer. Hoppy will then post the name of the beer on the beer board, like the NCAA tournament where you put the <laughs> Velcro, you put the thing on there. Which began, shout out to TBT. That really kind of started yeah, with TBT, TBT started right? That. They started that. Kurt so you're going to attach the name to the bracket. Outstanding. Yeah, I'll be ready. Then uh, they'll pour one for Hop, and he will he will taste his beer, and then it will be served to the 50 folks who are going to be with us. And then shortly thereafter, Luke Darnell, the world champion barbecuer, will come in, and he will explain what he has prepared for food. It's going to be four meats, a couple of sizes. Got cobbler in there, too. 
<laughs> I've got, got a blueberry peach cobbler together. Any of a scoop of vanilla? Or Might no? have, I don't know about Probably the vanilla. Probably not. Yeah, don't know about the vanilla. And then uh, that's it. We're, we're, we're just going to we're gonna hang out for two hours. And then... I didn't go to the game. No. <laughs> <laughs> Get there and in time then, for the 7 o'clock tip-off. So we're, we're in there from 4 until 6. <laughs> and then at 6 o'clock, the, the doors open and folks can come in at 6. And I know that there's six kegs and three of them will be used by us. Because each person gets three beers and they each get a growler on their way out. So that's three kegs. That'll use three. So there'll still be three barrels, Kirch of Vale available. Yes. So Kirch come available. on in. You can Kirch available. Very good. And also some barbecue from, uh, there's going to be extra pulled pork as well. So folks, they'll have that on the menu at the apothecary. But we do have a, a capacity situation though. So for in order for people to get in at six, that means some people have to exit, right? Yes. So there yeah. potentially could be a line. Yeah. Because that's why we only had 50 to begin yes, with. Because, correct. Because we're limited seat, to the space. Six, yeah. Seat 62. Okay. You see what it, I just read the back. The unique audio QR code. Can I mention that or is that? Sure. On this growler makes this special collector's item one of a kind. True. This is a QR code on the back of the growler. And if you. I don't know that you want to say what it does. Okay, we'll leave it at that. Yeah, that's part of the surprise. Just think like 50 years from now when you go to like that antique road show. And then yeah, like, there'll be one. Mm. Somebody else like, oh my it. gosh, you have one of those Kirch of Ill growlers? Yeah. No. Yeah, who knows what it'll be. That's worth like two, three dollars. What, the growler? That's a big boy growler. Oh, that's for real. Yeah, I know. That's a, that's a gallon, half gallon? 64 ounces. There, were, there was some debate. You go 32, you go, you know, schmo in 32 you you or 60. Even, you didn't even pause on that. We can do a 32. No, we're not doing 32. Any conversation that we had about this event in our planning, like, Whenever it came up, like, do you want to do, like, 32 or 64? 64. Do you want, like, the this type of material for the T-shirt? The best material. <laughs> what do you guys want to do? Two meats or four from Luke Darnell? Four. <laughs> four. Four meats. Like, what One do you side wanna, or two. Two. What, what do you want to do for the brisket? Wagyu from Snake River. <laughs> That's what it is, too. It's Wagyu? From, stink, from Snake River. Oh my gosh! Yeah, baby, it's a real event. This is we ain't we ain't playing. We, this I mean, ain't we're no, debuting this, a beer. We're not gonna half-ass the food. This ain't no school cafeteria food, big boy. This ain't is no there small, wagyu brisket. Yes, this ain't no small boy deal. This is a oh, big boy deal. That's nice. Can I get in the front of the line on that too? <laughs> <laughs> that's all your deal. <laughs> like, get back. My beer. I get front of the line. Get the first meat. <laughs> Might have a special guest with me. Oh, really? Might. Okay, cool. TBA. Ready to the text line. Here we go, Taylor. First one. Here's my wife, Morgan. Can we get his wife, Morgan, up there, Taylor? Purchasing the Fly Rod <laughs> Slim Jim <laughs> at the most famous Go-Mart in West Virginia. That's the Flatwoods Go-Mart, and that is, that's the thing that Hunter bought. I think that she's folded it in half. It's actually twice as long as well, that. I was going to say, it may, like, if you look closely, it might go down past her, el or past her elbow and, and yeah, wrap it is. back out the door. There. Yeah, probably. Yeah. So thank you very much, Morgan, <laughs> yeah, Morgan, for buying the Fly Rod Slim Jim <laughs> at Gomart. Of course, and right next to her is all that Mountain Dew, right? <laughs> Perfect. Mountain Dew is the number one drink. That's true, by the way. Oh, yeah. The Absolutely. number one number one beverage in West Virginia. That's excellent. Good start. Soon to be replaced by Kircherville. Yeah, exactly. Adam good, and Good job, Morgan. Yeah. Joel in Atlanta. Hey, three guys. I read online where the Big 12 football schedule for the coming year won't be released before. Feb 1. Is it possible? The two conferences are working toward moving Okeed in Texas to the SEC for 23. Thanks, Joel in Atlanta. No, I've got no indication whatsoever that it's going to happen for 23, but 24, yes. Where's the schedule? As first reported. I'm done with the schedule. I've recused myself. I said that in the last episode. Is I've recused again? myself. Yeah, who cares? cares? Who cares? Tell us when we're going to play. Adam and Beckley writes, I know the offseason is months away, but how about WWE Hall of Famer Mick Foley is a guest this summer. Always a West Virginia connection. His first wrestling match was in Clarksburg. I would love to hear his story and the memories of that. Adam and Beckley. Well, he'd be a great one. He'd Mick have some Foley. stories. Mankind. Yeah. Excuse me? Mankind was one of his characters. There are West Virginia. was a heavy WWE guy. I know you went through a period. West Virginia is based upon Google searches and professional wrestling. Yeah. Number one in the country. 
and inquiries about professional wrestling that come out of the state of West Virginia that get Googled. By the way, I, I sometimes land on it. I don't, I don't know all the characters, but the, the, rest, the wrestling itself doesn't interest me, although it's gotten mo more acrobatic and more athletic. I mean, it's, really, it's amazing what they can do. Is I just love when they have the mic. The best. They're just going, I mean, they are very, very good at that. Yeah. And I think that, and the way they, you know, the way they build tension and conflict. Sure. And right at the moment when they're reaching something, uh-oh, here know, comes somebody. <laughs> do you know who has their own wrestling podcast and is a central wrestling figure in West Virginia? Who? Stephen P. New, attorney at law, who you've had. Yeah. Huge in it. Steve New. Huge in it. Really? Huge in it. Interesting. Did not know that. Yeah. Didn't know that. Hey, Scopes, hoppy, 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 and spreads. It is the Sasquatch from Fairmont once again. Texting you about the 1,000-mile motorcycle trip in a day. It is called the Iron Butt Challenge. I've done it six times. Wow. <laughs> three, three trips to Sturgis, South Dakota. Very possible. I rode from Fairmont to Laverne, Minnesota, which is 1,084 miles. You gain a couple of hours ride time with the time zone difference on the way. You can't take your time, and you have to ride with a purpose for sure. I love the show, guys. So they, I, so that's a whole thing called the Iron Butt Challenge. I could imagine. thousand miles in a that's day. That's getting after it. But it's, it is pretty neat how he does time zones. You, you, yeah, you, you, right? gain, you, get, you gain a little bit. Maybe the Big 12. Sturgis is one of the big ones, one of the biggest. Oh, that's, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Texter. Hey, guys, I don't know if you saw this, but I found it rather ironic. When Marcus Smart was asked what Eric Stevenson said to him on Monday night, his response was he grabbed his private parts, and I told him, dude, you can't do that. That next evening, Marcus Smart, playing for the Celtics, was ejected for cursing out the female official on the court. Marcus, dude, you can't do that. <laughs> Love the show. Read from New Jersey. True that. Read. Yeah. Did really? that happen? Oh. Hmm. Texter, scopes, spreads, and subs. Catching up on some of the previous shows, and I've got a couple of comments. Tony. Please, please do the following. Pull out your cell phone. Oh, this is good. Open your email. Click edit in the top right corner. Click select all in the top left corner. Click mark <laughs> in the bottom left corner. Click mark as red. Excellent. Will you do that? That's excellent. That gets rid of your, what, 57,000? What the heck is the number? No, it's 57,000 on no, red no, emails? No, it's not that many. That's not that many. 40,072. <laughs> okay, thanks. Do that. You know, here's my problem is I got like 37,000. But I, yeah. That makes them crazy. But I can't get, I mean, I don't want to get rid of all of them. I know. I know where you're at, to... buddy. I know where you're at, buddy. I know where you're at. Yeah, you don't want to get rid of this. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why you would. May go back in and read that one that's number 3,412th on the list. There at are times, wait, stop. There are times where you do put a search in because you knew someone emailed you and you find it and it's like from two years ago, but you still need it. If they're on red, you don't know what was in those emails, so you don't know that they emailed you. Is the number no, only the red. unread? Brad. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't red. Hey, Brad, just... Brad, is the number only the unread? Yeah. That's the number. That's yeah. Sure. All the, so it won't, it'll keep the ones? You can just, the, the texture's helping you. You can mark it as red, so it'll get rid of that 40,000 number. They'll All still right. be in there. You okay. didn't delete them. All right. Number two. I can't believe you mentioned Hoppy getting new clothes from Daniels, but you didn't mention shoes. The guy has two pairs of shoes, and his dress shoes were purchased during the Ford administration. <laughs> Get the man multiple pairs of dress shoes, and preferably in a color other than black. Oh, so I want to go to – is take another care. one of you available tomorrow? Yeah, we'll take care of At you. Daniels? Yeah. Number three. I mean, the game will have been played Friday, so you're, you're available on Saturday. Number three. Tony is right about the Uggs house shoes. I was skeptical, frustrated when the wife bought them. Now they never come off my feet when I get home. Number four, I agree with Brad. Don't dig up dirt on the Mothman. If you want to dive into the world of the supernatural, figure out a way to undo the Mutt's curse. That's Zach in Charleston. Thank you, Zach. Texter says, hey, guys, I've got 27 acres in Wayne County. <laughs> Ideal for hunting, camping, goats, and moonshine, still whatever you want to do. Also near East Lynn Lake for fishing. Love the show always. Hoppy, hoppy, hoppy for Governor 24. 27 acres. Yeah. yeah. Tony with a Y, little hugs, and beer meister. 
Last two games were rough for sure, but I think this team can get out of the early grave they've dug. But it could just as easily get deeper. I trust the Hall of Famer to fix it. P.S. West Virginia Outdoor Power in Anmore has Cub Cadets with steering wheels. <laughs> Tell them Justin sent you, and you will get blank stares at a regularly priced mower. <laughs> Hey, Happy hunting, to... Justin West Milford. You were supposed what? to bring the picture of your John Deere. I was? Yeah. I was efforting that. There can was two bring... pictures you were supposed to send Brad last Hey, show. Taylor, can you go ahead and put up the picture? Oh, oh. Do we have... oh there it is. <laughs> well done. Current state. I mean, that's actual in its state. I just walked out, took the picture, sent it to Taylor. Yeah. Taylor. The hood's up. Going to get to it. Going to fix that. So what do you think is wrong with it? I don't know. I, I mean, it just won't start? My, my limited capabilities, I, I tried multiple over? things. Turns I, even, over. I even put a new spark plug in. <laughs> That's pretty good. Does it turn over? I, I don't even remember now. No, I don't think it turns over at all. It doesn't turn over? I don't think. It's been a year and a half now since I tried it. Battery? Because remember, I went into the portal, had a great <laughs> job by me in the portal, found a tremendous <laughs> landscaper, a five-star, had him, brought him, couldn't retain him. He went back in the portal. Can I come over and take a look at it? Yeah, you'll well, do a sure. lot. Yeah, you'll do a lot with it, Sparky. <laughs> I'll bring Chuck. Chuck will fix it. Well, if you had Chuck with you, I mean, Chuck. Chuck if I bring Chuck, it. we might be able to get it fixed. I mean, man that has that many tools. He, yeah. Yeah, okay, we're yeah. in business. I'm then. telling you who the guy is. The guy is my guy in Point Mary in PA, Lou Strosnyder. Yeah, he'll come get it. He'll come get it. Oh well, there, well, there you go. He'll come get it. Absolutely, he'd do that. I mean, they're probably looking for things to do right now at the sh at the shop in Point Mary, and it's January. Yeah. Right? Probably need to put that on the list for next week. We probably need to make contact. I mean, I go back. Would it, so it didn't. I mean, when did it stop? Not starting About six years ago. Not this past summer, but the summer before, right at the end of the summer. That's why it's in that current shape. Because it was at the end of the summer. I only needed like two more mows out of it, yeah. and we were going to be good, and it went down. The wife say anything about that? That's why we went into the transfer portal. Uh, she said. <laughs> She said, to heck with what you're doing out there. Knock it off. We're just going in the portal. We're going to get this done. Now now your guy's going out of the portal. Now he's gone in the portal. I couldn't retain him. Just like, Bo money. Just like Bobby money. Petrino, he took off. Stayed one year left. No, he's mowing grass in Miami. I mean, he got the ball a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody from Miami called, offered him a better deal. Wonder who that was. <laughs> uh, Justin uh, in West Milford in that last text said, Tony with a Y. Had a situation in the last show where someone uh, wrote my name, T-O-N-I. Upset you. It did. And since that happened, the uh, gentleman that did it exchanged emails with me. Oh. He's a wonderful gentleman. Apologized? He didn't mean it. And he and I, I think, are now bonded. Oh, good. Uh, he is a former CPA. Mm -hmm. He's Bruce, 76 years old. All right. And uh, maybe I can give you the exchange. <clears throat> Check one of your emails. Yeah, I, that's why I save them. Good thing you saved it. Uh, he said, uh, hey, Tony, anyway, I flunked spelling. Hope you can find it in your heart to forgive me. I still love you guys. Oh. Bruce, the guy who may or may not have included CPA in his former signature <laughs> block. <laughs> I wrote back to him. I said, uh, I said, hey, uh, you made us laugh. You made me laugh. I was having some fun with you and really appreciate you listening. We are in good standing. In the world of CPAs, we have successfully completed the audit with no findings of impropriety. Well Stay done. well and a happy new year. Well done, Tony. And he said, and you made both my wife and I laugh. Thank you. West Virginia basketball and football sure aren't making us laugh. I told my wife that all any team needs to do is to beat us is just drive the ball to the basket. I'll keep praying for better play and listening to three guys. Happy. Now he signs his name. B H, just a small case B and a small case H. He's gotten rid of that CPA. I'm you're glad good, to see you're you guys good standing though. though. Yeah, we're good. This is the same way that I cured the entire situation with the continent of Australia. Remember, had the punting situation there, fixed it. I give you credit, Tony. I think you did. I think you manned up. Thank I think you. you. I think you were the larger man there. Yeah. Texter, looking to purchase authentic football jersey. Because of Transfer Portal, I am reluctant to pick a player's name for the jersey. Prather? Question mark. No. Alston? No. An unknowing emotion and effect of the portal. Needless to say, no jersey purchased. Stick with players who are loyal and legends and I buy. Signed, Yogi Chris, Salt Lake City, Utah. Hello! Just get a Pat White jersey. 
Yeah, it's standard. Like get a major jersey, get a yeah. get a Stevie Slade, Hostetler, get, Bulgers, ton yeah, of yeah. guys that guys that came Tally. through. Yeah. Tally. James and Jet. See Caden Prather stunningly went to uh Maryland, huh? Yeah. Boy, what a stunner that was. What now? Say again. Prather transferred to uh, Maryland. Whatever. Texter. Right. I mean, okay. All right. You can't it, I mean, anymore you Texter, walking toward our harbor a few days ago wearing my flying WV shirt, and I got three unrelated folks commenting about West Virginia in 10 minutes. Has to be one of the most recognizable symbols in college sports. Yes. And our West Virginia connection, Dalton Bolden and Pat Robinson from West Liberty, two of the starting guards on the College of Charleston team that's currently ranked 23rd, and they've now won 14 in a row. Good luck on Kurt Val Day and to West Virginia. Oklahoma has already dropped two at home, and West Virginia can't afford the same fate. Signed Joe and Charleston. Both Dalton and Robinson aren't just starting. They're contributing. Dalton Bolin had a double-double last night. We were watching that during Sportsline. Game was on. Tremendous. They went in the portal, went up to a Division One team. It's now ranked there, Hoppy. Excellent. Friends of, friends of the program. Texter, think about the. You got Dale Bonner at Baylor, mm-hmm. played for Fairmont, mm-hmm. right? Said for years, MEC, rolling in talent. It's good basketball. You think the kids play in that league and they're able to recruit in that league like that because of Reed Amos being the commissioner? Reed's a strong commissioner. I think so, too. Great programs in that league. Yeah. It's serious. That's a great basketball league. Oh, I know. It is serious. Texter, first of all, sorry for the long message. However, I've identified the problem with college football and basketball, and I've got the solution. Ooh. The problem is that the NCAA is a nonprofit and runs the two sports as such. While that might have been okay until the 80s or so, since that time, no one in their right mind could credibly argue that college football and basketball aren't revenue generating at the highest level. Just look at all the scandals that have occurred due to schools paying players. Look at the coaches and staff salaries. These programs have nothing in common with nonprofits. The solution, turn college football and basketball at the higher levels into pro organizations that have all the attributes of pro sports. That means colleges directly pay the players, sign them to contracts, initiate trades, institute salary caps, have multiple levels of competition based on program resources. And by this, I mean that West Virginia would not compete in the highest division against Alabama, Texas, Ohio State, but would compete in the same division as Pitt, Tech, Maryland, etc., which would probably be one level below the top. Each division would also hold its own playoff at the end. I don't see any other legitimate way forward for the two sports, and the sooner they adopt it, the pro model, the better. To be clear, I don't blame the players for all this. I blame the administrators and the NCAA. They had two golden geese, never bothered to keep track of the coyote that was getting ready to eat those geese alive. He ends it by saying, can I be the commissioner now? I love the show. J.D. from the Southern Coalfields. So, you guys can jump in. I, I've got a thought. We're getting closer to what you're saying. I don't think it'll ever be bifurcated like that. But, yeah, it's, it's going to be a pro model going forward. The institutions still uh, get nauseous and sick when they think about making the student-athletes employees because of all of the other layers that come with that workers comp and all that you shut your mic off doggy and giving up nonprofit status right and it's not just Taxes. NCAA, it's the yeah. schools so yeah there's a lot there thoughts any hopster just that that you're you know college big time college athletics now you're sort of half in and half out you're half pro and half college and it's sometimes you're saying well, we're still colleges and universities and we're still student athletes. And then other times you're saying, well, we're, you know, we're, we're have this professional model and we're, you know, paying players. So you're, you're in transition here. Mm-hmm. Exactly what it is. Yeah, absolutely. No, you no, don't no, know no. how and, long and, the transition is going to last. You know, as, as Brad always says too, I mean, look, if you're, in, if you have the national football league and you have an expansion team, it's like, here are the rules. <laughs> you, know, you can't go out and make up your own rules, but in college, you know, you can't, you can't get, you couldn't get them to agree to the time of day. So how do you get them? How do you create any model, any model 
when you have Brad, what you've talked about many times. Yeah, from an organization, the NCA, that exists with member institutions that won't agree. Right. Right. And the SEC doesn't want to agree to what anybody else is doing, which is part of why you're having a fracture. Now, there's leagues that have different thoughts on how things should be run. The issue is that the NCAA is putting all of its focus on getting federal intervention to create legislation to put some form of continuity in the college space. But as you said, Hoppy, they can't find out who's going to be the speaker. And so at what level can they get involved in the not-too-distant future? I mean, it doesn't look good right now. I mean, maybe, you know, it comes back to can you have a central power? Maybe the central power are the TV networks. Maybe like ESPN could say, Here's here's what we're gonna do, and yeah. we're paying you all the money, yeah. so we'll decide how Senator, things are going to work. We'll set the rules. They already are. Well, <laughs> they didn't set more rules, so there's well, more. What, what do they care about? Who's transferring? Why would they do that? What do they care? They're already setting the rules. They're already calling the shots. No one's telling them what to do. They're telling you what to do. Why would they want more responsibility? They'll just keep doing what they're doing. They don't need it to change, do they? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm, I'm I'm just saying that that that. They're the only ones now that would have the central power if you wanted to make these changes. They, right, you're right. What do they care? They don't care as long as they have the product, but they're the only ones that have that. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure there can – it's almost like you've got to – college sports as a whole in some way has to declare bankruptcy from the standpoint they've got to just start it over. The, the, trying to back into all these rules and restrictions with the way it currently is, how, how are you ever going to get there? And that's why I think there is some merit – if there's a break and a group becomes a smaller group that is more like-minded, then you can maybe to get to some consensus and rules that people will still break. But it, it, you, need, you need a smaller group that's more like-minded is, is what the answer is. Mm-hmm. You can't have SEC schools and a Texas and Oklahoma running at a $200 million budget with the same voting power as all due respect, a school in the MAC that doesn't have the resources. And you've heard... Here's the thing. You just you just have to listen to what the powers that be are telling you. When Greg Sankey's coming out, the SEC commissioner, and is saying, if they have the resources, if SEC schools have the resources to hire three more baseball assistants and give a scholarship to every one of the players on the roster, but they're told they can't do that because not everybody can afford that and everybody else is voting no, can you see the frustration? Sure. Right. So if there's a group of schools that comes together that all has similar resources – you have a better chance of, of getting to some rules that make some sense. You saw, In its current form, that's going to be really hard. Yeah, you saw the story that came out yesterday about the expansion possibility of the NCAA basketball tournament to over 90 teams. No. <laughs> no. They got to get away from the small schools. They got to get away from those schools that, that have the same amount of votes that the big schools do. That's not what people want. People don't want 90 teams in the NCAA tournament. 64 is a beautiful thing. 90, it just dilutes it. It takes away from it. Texter, Joey in Princeton. I'm not trying to blame the officials for our 0-2 start, but why can't we let both teams play more? The K-State game, pitiful. Oak State wasn't as bad in the first half, but it seemed in the second half the refs took control. Is this a nationwide thing or just a Big 12 thing? Everyone complains. In one of our shows late in December, we ordained a gentleman by the name of Jim to be the poet laureate of three guys before the game. Do you remember that, Hoppy? I do, I do. And um, I was going to say, no, uh, with all due respect, I mean, that's the only poem we've gotten. Oh, he's got another one. Oh, he's got, okay. <clears throat> Jim, the poet laureate, telling Ooh, everyone. One, I mean, you know. Sorry. <clears throat> Jim, the poet laureate, telling everyone not to hit the panic button just yet, even though the opening weekend's expectations weren't met. The vast majority of conference play is still ahead of us, and a good deal of those games at home is definitely a plus. My challenge for these guys is a new streak to start. One with consecutive wins as long as the lines at go mart. <laughs> Let's go, Mountaineers. That's good. Well, that's solid. Get, put some work into it. I mean, you had to think. Thank you. Texter, Tony, I love Eric Stevenson, but he needs to play under control. No player bigger than the team. 
I hope Eric learns that before he is unemployed. I very much think that he does. I think it, I, I'm praying that he does. Texter, hey, Scope, Senator, and hops cubed. Last time I checked, there is another Italian in Oklahoma. The athletics director at Oklahoma, Joe Castiglione. Salute. Thank you. During our last episode, I said that why can't Hoppy's new beer, Kerchev Ale, why can't one day it grow to the same scope and specter of having its own horses, its own Clydesdales? Oh, well, Mike and Myrtle Beach has found them. There it is. <laughs> when you're built for feed but not speed. There it is, folks. That is the debut of the Kerchev Ale Clydesdale. It's going to be a nice look, Hoppy. <laughs> Can't wait to see you. It's a nice looking horse. Just have, I guess, put a harness on him. Just have him drag a growler behind him. <laughs> you know, him uh, or dude. I thought we were going goats though. Yeah, goats. Well, whatever you want. When we buy our land, I mean that. I love we make the our picture. land purchase. It's funny, but I, I think we're more goat oriented here, aren't we? Fine. Been a lot more discussion about goats than horses. And boars. And boars. When I was little, I was eleven. I was in Italy. And uh, my uncle came down a driveway one morning with a goat on a string. Riding it or walking it? Walking it with a leash. <laughs> walking it. That bad boy was on the dinner table that night. The old 11-year-old Tony didn't touch it. Not today. I'd go in there and, give me that thing. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. It's baby goat. Yeah. That kind of hurt me a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, from Amy in New Martinsville, Tony advocated for a free throw coach. Our free throw percentage was great before the first two Big 12 games. Perhaps what we need more is a sports psychologist that could helpfully help the Stevens issue as well. Stevenson issue as well. Last one. Brewmaster, spreads and mittens. <laughs> in the midst of our holiday travels, we had to stop and celebrate the most coveted place in West Virginia. Actually, that was the first text of the, that was the guy whose wife was in there with the fly rod. Slim Jim. Go ahead, Taylor. Put the fly rod Slim Jim up there again. At the Go-Mart? At the Go-Mart in Flatwoods. There yeah. she is. Morgan. Yeah, Morgan. She's, tr- she's terrific. What you got in the other hand? Got a bunch of goodies. Bunch of snacks. Bunch of snacks. They were probably traveling. You know, you're just, yeah, get snacks. You, know, you eat snacks. things when you're, when you're driving, you pull off there and you eat things that you just don't eat any at any other time, but they're designated driving snacks. It's part of the fun of, of a road that's trip. That's why, Hunter, that's why he, it surprised me when I got back into the vehicle that night, and I said, Greg, do you want to drive? And he said, yeah, I'll drive. I didn't realize that when he went in there, he bought a Slim Jim that was six and a half <laughs> feet long. And so we're driving. You don't think he does that on a regular basis? No, I don't think he's running out today and getting one. That was simply a drive. And then, so he gets... You, you know, when you come off that Flatwoods and get back onto the interstate, sure. I mean, you gotta, you're going up the ramp. Like He wasted no time because I think he was using available light that was coming in <laughs> before he gets into the total darkness. And he's to undoing open it, that. you mean? He needed yeah. it. So he's driving one yeah. hand. He's got the other. He's got the Slim Jim. And I'm looking over. And went, what in the hell are you doing? And then it's like it was all of a sudden there was a python inside of the truck. <laughs> he's got a Slim Jim that's like whoosh. There was also a weird seating situation with him driving, <laughs> if I if I remember what now? correctly. I don't think we had the picture, but there was a weird there was a weird seating driver's side. <laughs> My man's head was about an eighth of an inch from the ceiling. Hunter Why was all even... of a sudden like seven three <laughs> in Tony's truck, and it's you know like sometimes you're in a semi and the steering wheel's like below your bus yeah. <laughs> and the steering wheel's below you. That was Hunter. Like, normally you reach kind of slightly up for the steering wheel. Hunter was, like, over the steering wheel driving it like, it was, an, it was an odd setup. Wait a second. Man. You have it? Yeah. Because that, that almost struck me as much as the fly rod Slim Jim. So that was in August, <laughs> and we went down Weird to watch the situation. first high school football game of the year. That's what that was. You oh, my God, there it is. Bus. Hey, huh? uh, That's what it was like. Bus. It's like a big turn. <laughs> turn it this way. <laughs> Hey, take, steering wheel. Hey, you have one of those things on the with wheel. The, like with the get, handle on there that you can keep it easy to. <laughs> All right. I don't know how quick he can turn this around. Uh, but, Taylor, I'm emailing. email it and he can turn it. Eight, okay. 
Here you go. I'm emailing him. <laughs> Email. This is Hunter. Hoppy, have you not seen you this picture? Seen this? I, think, I think I have, but I oh. forgot, so I want to see it again. All right, Taylor, I sent it to you. Um, I don't know I saw, why that happened like why, that. Why is it that that even if you're like careful about what you eat, when you're traveling and you stop in a Go Mart, you feel you you can get anything. <laughs> you can. It's free right? game. It's, it's like yeah, it's absolutely like, free just game. Start just start getting stuff. Yeah, Funyuns. Yeah, cr pork peanut rinds, butter crackers, pork fun, rinds. Yeah, peanut butter crackers. Just get it all. Yes, yeah, so and you feel like it's okay. Yeah, right? <laughs> until until about an hour later, <laughs> and you go, what in the? And I had an incident there many many years. <laughs> Many years ago in the days. Look. See, look. <laughs> see? Why is he above it like that? You see? Ne never are you in a peasant. If you're regular, it's a Ford truck. Why is he sitting like that? What is that? That's a see? <laughs> <laughs> it's a see what I'm saying? Is he driving like a kitty car? That's what I'm saying. Driving. Why is he like that? <laughs> Tony, Tony, why is he sitting like that? Is this, everybody have a, Why does that steering wheel look like a lifesaver? <laughs> he, is he driving or tying his shoes? Why does it look like what that? What the Bobby? heck? Everybody take their seat on the bus. We're going to be leaving now. See, that's what I mean. I think the fly rod Slim Jim was the second funniest thing that happened on oh that trip. So maybe that's why it flipped me out because the I looked over to him. All I'm next there. to him. I'm next to him where I took that picture. <laughs> so I looked up and he's got that Slim Jim up there. And I'm going, everything was, it was totally, depth perception was shot at that yeah. point. What is he sitting on or something? No. Sitting on a cushion? That's an F-150. Why does he look like that? It looks like he's inside of a caterpillar. That's what I'm asking. I don't, I don't it looks know like why. it's one of those trucks at Greer Limestone that goes inside <laughs> the mine. <laughs> That's, I know. What's it look? He's got a smile on his face. Well, he well sure. He's, he got, he's, he's, got a, he's got a seven-foot Slim Jim he's ready to do over there. Wow. That's, oh, that's weird. Oh, man. It was weird. Something wrong there. There is absolutely. We we'll have to ask Hunter about that. Unless know. we go out and see your truck and see that it's a tiny steering wheel that no. goes way down like that. It's a regular. It's regular. It's weird. I mean, I mean, usually it's just the brake and the gas pedal. The steering wheel doesn't sit at the same level as the gas and the brake pedal. Stupid. When podcast. I was uh, when I was young, and cars were different. And they'd have, you know, big steering wheels and people would sit down low and it'd always be somebody short. And they're always like looking oh, yeah. underneath. <laughs> and you, get, you get behind them underneath and you're looking. The steering you get behind them and it doesn't look like anyone's driving. <laughs> it's just you see the steering wheel, but you oh don't see. Oh my gosh, no one's driving. Yeah, exactly. Brad, you're too young to remember that, but that used to happen with the little old ladies and little old men. Yes. Oh, I'd say, yeah. You see that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The wood paneled station wagon we used to have had a big Did steering wheel. Did you have a wood panel station wagon? Oh, yeah. Big. Bigger than a semi. Really? Learn to drive on that, like a big, like a Dodge or a Plymouth or Chevy. something. Chevy. You, Chevy. Chevy. Hey, but, you remember those Cadillacs, those Bigly. long Cadillacs? Yeah. Oh, Land Cruisers, Land Cruisers. My brother had a one time had a Lincoln Continental, used Lincoln Continental. Yeah, you could sit in the middle and not reach either one, <laughs> <laughs> either one of the door handles. <laughs> uh, we've done enough of nothing here. Ah, uh, good times. Boy, I hope we win the game tomorrow. Yeah, we back Monday to recap Friday's game. <laughs> <laughs> we will be back on Monday. We'll give you a recap of West Virginia, Kansas, and a recap of the debut. It's here. Of Hoppy Kerchival. That will then be brought to area bars a week from this Friday, the 13th. But there's a limited just in, amount. Just in Morgantown. Just in the Morgantown now, yeah. area. Yeah. Limited amount, correct? Yeah, it's only, there's only 14 barrels, and we're using six. <laughs> <laughs> so it'll be get it. Get it. Thanks to our producer, Jonathan Taylor County, Tyler Consolidated, Johnny Jingleheimer Smith. You'll see some social media pictures starting to come out tomorrow because Taylor's wearing something special to our event. Oh, he is? Yeah, I can't tell you what it is. We'll okay. see. All right, we're out. Thanks for being with us. Three guys before the game brought to us by the Burdett Camping Center, the only warranty forever. RV dealer in all of West Virginia. Visit the fine folks at Burdett at burdettcamping.com, located in Winfield. By Comax Business Systems, full-service Konica Minolta dealer. Go to Comax Business Systems at comaxwv.com if you're a business owner. 
you need help, they got you from equipment, supplies, all the way through managing your voice and your IT. And by GoMart, if you aren't a GoMart Rewards Card member yet, you need to sign up. It's free. Go to GoMart.com. Check it all out. Rewards and more details. Go for good times. Go for GoMart. Episode 431 has been completed. Everyone stay well. We'll see you.